Alao Pa and welcome. My name is Xavier and you are watching Oh God Guide Me. And today we're joined by Mr. Opas uh, from Namibia. And uh, we're going to find out what led him to the Baha'i faith and his journey towards the teachings of Baha'u'llah. So, uh, Opas, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where you're from, Namibia, and uh, yeah. what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, my, like, um, like, like Xavier said, my name is Opas. Um, I'm Nigerian, but I'm living in Namibia. Uh, I'm a graphic designer, photographer, videographer, website designer. I mean, basically anything media. Uh, well, my, my background, education-wise, is um, engineering. I have three degrees in engineering. Um, the first two, the first one was a double honor um, course, so that's um, electrical engineering and electronic engineering. Oh, uh, so you said three degrees. Yeah. Oh wow, that's that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I went to do an associate's degree in um, software engineering, but I never really actively used most of the degrees. I think only the software engineering is more or less being used right now. Um, yeah, yeah, and this is I definitely probably, software time. Probably, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've traveled around the world. I've been to about seventeen countries. Yeah, this is yeah. I've been to seventeen countries. I want to visit all. I've been like ninety-seven countries in the world if I can. Uh, oh so yeah, that, that's a good. Can, that's a good goal. <laughs> visit all the countries. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what's it called? I, I worked with uh, an NGO called ISEC, so that allowed me to travel the world. To visit different countries, um, really experience different places and all of that, and yeah, I think that is I, I, so. Traveling, photography, yeah, that kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, I love to cook. Um, I do martial arts or karate more specifically, and yeah, I think that's kind of like a bit about me. Yeah. A little bit, it's about you. Get to know you. All right, I I can't cook to save my life, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's good that you can. Um, so uh, what we're here to find out today is what led you uh, to the Baha'i faith? What, what, where did you first learn about it? Um, I, it was when I went to tra I traveled to India and I think the, the curious person in me was just wants to go to visit all the temples, to really go sightseeing and everything. Uh, so I was in Delhi at the time, New Delhi, and I had seen the photos of the Lutus Temple, but I mean, I hadn't ever heard of the Baha'i faith before that. Uh, uh -huh. I just thought it was a very cool temple. And when I went to the temple, I read a little bit about the, the Baha'i faith. And I made it was like, if this is what this stands for as a religion, then why is it made being more practiced around the world? It's, a, it's very diverse, it's quite open. It does not necessarily discriminate as, um, it's very encompassing. And when I, when I stepped into the Lutus temple, the sheer ambience and the serenity just in this place, I just, I couldn't understand it. It was just really peaceful. And yeah, I've, I've heard people who travel to, uh, yeah, you have to, to the temple to really, describe really it that get way. That energy, really get that, that vibe. So I didn't understand it at the, at the, at the time. And it was something where I was like, okay, fine, cool. This is one of the faiths I've, I've, I've read about. So I didn't necessarily take anything into it about, at, the, at the time. And when I had when I moved to, to Namibia in 2017, uh, I felt I needed to um, be more serious about my faith. And uh -huh. I was doing, I was doing a lot of research uh, into Islam, um, into like diff different religions, basically which one really Yeah, um, really broaden it and you know yeah, bring out what, what feels right. <laughs> exactly what actually feels right. Because um, I come from a from a multicultural a multi religious background. So my dad is Christian and mom is Muslim. Yeah, so okay. already it's already diverse already. And I was Catholic for some time of my life. Uh, I, used to, I used to be an altar boy, so oh. I was I was very willing to go out on my own to really experience different faiths and really what made, what felt right to me. So yeah, um, so when I when, when I when I moved here, I did some research a bit more to see what exactly it's about. Um, mm -hmm. And I got into the Baha'i community in Namibia, and uh, yeah, I think that's uh, I, I declared in October of last year. So this is kind of like six months or seven. Oh months wow! So you're you're a new new believer. <laughs> I'm really. So October. That's well. That's wonderful. Um, you know, welcome. <laughs> Um, it's it's a wonderful journey that you've been able to uh, to just you know not just say well, these are all wrong but you took it you took all the the research from all these different religions and you said you know you studied yeah. them and then you you said well this is not quite for me or you know maybe and and then you find uh, the Baha'i faith and you said 
this, you know, this is the shoe that fits. <laughs> this, this is the shoe that fits. Again, the organization I was working with, um, Isaac, we, is a very diverse organization. It's in 127 mm -hmm. countries, and you get different people from different walks of life. And yeah, I couldn't yeah. necessarily talk about how, um, okay, at the time, being, being in Christianity, how saying, okay, if, you're not, if you're not going to go through Jesus, then it means you're going to hell. And that mm -hmm. didn't make any sense to me. So what, what happens to people from North Korea then that not, that not necessarily have heard of, of, of Christianity? Do, uh -huh. Are they damned to hell by all means? The people in Amazon, Papua New Guinea, a lot of places around the world, really. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I really didn't, I couldn't really wrap my head around that. And for me, it was like looking at the Baha'i faith was very encompassing. It was open to everybody. So far, you're willing to more or less be a good person, really. And... For me, being a good person, being a good human being, trumps everything else. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can believe, you can believe anything in the world, but if you people are responding to kindness and being a good person, like you've just said, so that's good. That's that's a great story about how you how you discovered it. Um, what's uh, what's an experience that you, you know, you've personally had? Um, what really resonated with you as a Baha'i or as you were learning about the Baha'i faith? I think. I'm not sure whether I recognize the feeling before the fast because, like, that was like a few days, a few, a few, few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, fast. yeah. We just did the fast, so yeah. we're all recovering. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit weird because I haven't still um, fully adapted back to having like three, sweat, two, three meals or even more meals during the day. It feels a bit weird. It's like, oh, I'm yeah. just eat no. I woke up today. I woke up today to eat breakfast, and I went. No, no, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, I think I'm, I, I, I'm not really sure when it happened, but then I think it was this sense of relief, of this sense of um, just letting go of your problems and just like, okay, look, you know what, yeah, God, just do your thing and I'm just going to be here the past year sitting, just <laughs> watching with you, like legit. And um, I think that has been my most good. Um, I, I also start, recently started book one. We're almost done with the book one uh, in, our, in our devotional group. Oh, oh you're talking and, about Ruhi book one? Yeah, Ruhi book one. Yeah. Okay. And just reading the book, the way I did the things, I really, I was like, okay, if this is, why didn't I read this earlier? But I understand, okay, look, you need to, to grow as an individual to really understand, be willing to open your mind to accept new things and really um, accept new teachings. And just reading some of the, 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 the text in the Ruhi book one, and I'm like, my mind is just like, yo. Wow. <laughs> yeah, once you, once you read these texts, um, for a lot of people, it's just like, this is so obvious. It's, look at, <laughs> and, but it's, exactly. it, it's that obviousness that, that people really truly yearn for, the, these answers or these, these teachings that, that people want inherently to, to be a good person and to, to help people. And uh, the Baha'i teachings, they bring these and they categorize them, and they bring them in a way that's recognizable for us today. Um, exactly. I think yeah. also the poetic approach in which the writings take, and the heaviness, like, you read it, but then you have to like take a minute, like, yo, that's deep though. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, I think the, the one thing that really got, got my attention was, okay, I watch a lot of anime, and um, particularly from Bleach, um, there's a character, he's a captain there, and the way he responds to which character? Uh, seafood, uh, Bakuya. Oh yeah, okay, from Bleach. Yeah, so he has this um, condescending kind of way he talks and everything. Uh -huh. So having to <laughs> read some of the writings and the script is flipped, so it's more or less you, we as human beings, talking about exalting God in that such regard that look, we can never compare to him. There are different realms in between. We can never understand, but then we are, we are the manifestations and we are the ones to, to be the link between God and the people. It just like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it's <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it really is a way to, to bring you closer to God. You know, mm -hmm. um, in other teachings, it's, it's this unknowableness, which of course God is, but then through these writings, these holy writings, the Bible, the Quran, uh, yeah. Our holy book, the Kitab i Akhtas, um, it brings you close to God in a way that you just can't get on your own. And that's, these messengers, these prophets, these manifestations, whatever word you call them, really bring you and they bring you into the fold and they say, here is God. I'm really going to let you love him. <laughs> <laughs>
but yeah. And then, um, so, uh, so you said you were involved in Ruhi Book One. Any are you involved in any other community activities? Uh, along um, with that? that's um, that's one we just started, uh, and I've been very active with that one, like legit. Mm-hmm. Some, some times while we're while we're reading while the tutors are going through the book, I'm out here. The boys, they're, they're in section one, and I'm already looking at section three because. <laughs> I'm just like reading and like, yo, this thing is making a lot of sense. Though. Yes, sounds like you're so, really, uh, really diving um, into it. You're hungry for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm the kind of person where I feel like if I have my eyes set on something, I don't necessarily, like everything just blocks out. Like, okay, look, look, I'm going, this is where, this is the way I'm going and I'm blind to everything else. <laughs> so um, because of my, my activeness, I think, um, so uh, some friends of mine and I, we're, we're, we're going to do book 11, actually. Um, mm. so we're we're, we're going to start today. today. Oh, uh, so very good. some of the friends in Canada, some are in South Africa, and some are here. So it's just going to be a Zoom chat as well. So oh, so how. oh, so you're going to do the you're going to do the Ruhi book over Zoom, uh, just like we're yeah, doing okay. now. But at that level, but book one, we're going to do it um, still with the community. But I'm, oh. I'm going to book eleven. How it goes? Oh, okay. Oh, that's wonderful. You got you got that community, and then you've got that that big outreach, and you get to see all these different exactly. perspectives. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, uh, so as a, as a new Baha'i or a, as a, someone who's, who's found uh, the Baha'i faith, what are some struggles that you had, um, you know, a, as accepting uh, the teachings or so, some struggles you had with some of the teachings in and of themselves? Um, I think so far I haven't had, uh, what's it called, um, any, what do you call it, any difficulties or struggling the faith because for me it was more or less... Um, if I'm able to spiritually understand it, or if, uh, if I can phrase that in a different way, spiritual logic, mm-hmm. if it makes sense to me spiritually, I, logically. Mean, I can kind of, yeah, logically, then everything just kind of follows. And yeah. that's, that's, a great, was, that's a great way to look at uh, any uh, holy writings. If you can perceive it logically, <laughs> and, and it speaks for that, itself. Exactly. And from that was the approach I, that's the, that's the approach I took with a lot of things. If I can understand it logically and understand the spiritual point of view from it, then I'm able to uh, to really practice it, to really understand it, and to really deepen the, deepen the message. Because every time, um, since I'm still in book one, every time I read um, the book one, some passages, some passages, um, some, some, some passages, um, it's a different understanding, it's a different meaning. It hits me different every time I read this one specific um, chapter yeah. or one specific Oh my goodness, there is a, a thousand different layers, of layers. similar meanings exactly. in one sentence. <laughs> They're like, oh, this thing. Mm-hmm. And I get how it's different for a lot of people from different faiths. Because um, people, um, people that, uh, that are of the Islamic background can read the Quran in different ways and to hit them in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with Christianity, same thing with Buddhism and all the other religions as well. But then again, it all depends on your, your own personal conviction. How open are you to actually receiving these things? If you're not really open, then you, you're going to find a reason not to necessarily accept it. Or to give a reason, not necessarily to to want to deepen the meaning of what. Yeah, not to not to truly dive in and understand, and that's yeah, you know, exactly. that's what it's a gift to us as as Baha'is that we have that, um, the the ladder of 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 uh, interpretation that uh, Baha'u'llah yes, yes. and and his son Abdul Baha and the Universal House of Justice and Shoghi Effendi that you know if we have these questions they can say well let's clarify it for you and and we have that universally for everyone uh, in the world. To really understand it, to really, de- and it's, it's a, it's a long, it's a, I feel like it's a, it's a journey. What's no, it's a, it's a long discussion of different people having to understand it because the thing, if you look at the, the system, not necessarily the system, but the, the way how you would have in, in churches, you have the pastor, you have the, the congregation, and Islam, you have the imam, and then you have the congregation as well. Mm-hmm. But then this is more or less like a, it can, it can balance the plane to where. I don't know more than you know. The only thing that we all know that we can read, we can understand, we can really deepen these things. And just by we having different conversations, we can really dive in deep further into, yeah. into, the, into the right. That's a great point that, um, that, uh, that teaching of Baha'u'llah, the independent investigation of truth, you know, what I know is maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, or, but it's up to you to investigate it and then speak with others about it, not to be told what it means, but to find out that yeah. for yourself. Do you have any favorite writings? Uh, any any favorite prayers you can think of? Hmm. I'm still coming into a lot of the prayers. Um, of course, of course. 
I, yeah. I am <laughs> terrible at memorizing prayers. <laughs> well, I don't, Sometimes, I don't want to try to memorize. Like, okay, I feel like with time, um, with a specific prayer, I would, uh, it, was, it was going to come second nature to me. But yeah. I'm just giving my time, taking it one day at a time to really experience God, to really understand the religion, and to really just be the best version of myself through mm -hmm. the religion as well. Um, and I think so far, I would say, I, would, I recently started um, reciting the, the Tablet of Ahmed. Yeah, we have 21, 21 days quarantine. So I want to give myself that time to be just reciting the Tablet of Ahmed so that at least once I get out of quarantine, it's a new view on life. Um, but the ones I feel like that, that made sense to me, and I can't really remember the full thing, um, is the past, one of the, the writings where um, an, an analogy is written as to we being um, birds and we come down to um, get water and food from, from the land. And because of all the things that are happening, you get stuck in the land and you cannot necessarily return back to the celestial um, pity or to return back to heaven because of the things you've seen on earth. Uh -huh. That's a great one, yeah. That's just like, yo, this, this. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. <laughs> as well as um, the fact that there are different hierarchies in the world. So we understand that, okay, look, everything is considered through life. And we have, like, you have the plant kingdom, you have the animal kingdom, you have human beings. Mm -hmm. And our souls are a reflection of God. And not necessarily, like, using the mirror as an example. So the soul is not necessarily in the body, but it's a reflection of the life of God. And I'm like, yo. Hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that's um, that's a really profound way to look at it. Is is as you've said, the the soul reflecting uh, God's divinity and spirituality here exactly. on earth. Yeah, and also uh, I think also understanding the concept of the manifestation is that they are a link. We cannot so just the way um, the plants cannot understand the animals and vice versa, and we cannot necessarily speak the language of the animals and vice versa. The the manifestations of God have been able to understand what God is trying to teach us. How, what God wants, us, what, wants them to write and in mm. one specific language. So you can look at um, the writings of, of Muhammad. Um, you can write the writings of Mohalla. They did not necessarily have all those things in their head. It was more or less God giving them pen to paper. Uh -huh. Like, you use, here's my arm, fill it, here, here's the pen, and fill it with your grace, and then put pen to paper. And then yeah. just allow the, the ink to really flow and really just be the communication channel between the human race and God. Because again, you can absolutely understand it. And you say flow, let, let the words flow. It's a perfect description because um, Baha'u'llah, when he seemed, received his revelation, he described it as a, as a waterfall falling upon mm. him. And you know, so it's, it's that, this torrent of knowledge and, and, and experience. Um, so what are some ways that, uh, you know, you haven't had the struggles. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah. What are some ways you use the teachings in, in your daily life? Um, I think my, my the, the latest I use right now is just be more um, more deliberate with my communication to God. Um, praying more often in the morning, um, remembering okay, look, this is a covenant that I have with God, and it's a relationship, a relationship as well. So if I'm not able to to build that relationship, then it means obviously it's not going to grow as much as uh, or as much as it, sh it, sh it should. Yeah. So it's again, it's a deliberate action. It's a relationship. You have to build. It's, it's a day-to-day -day thing. Absolutely. Um, I can, it's an absolutely day-to-day -day thing. I can tie it because I'm currently doing 100 days of coding challenge uh, where I learn different, I'm, learning, I'm currently learning JavaScript. And oh. I think going on that journey of saying, look, every day it's its own day and having to replicate that or use that same logic across my life. So look, every day is different. Every day you have to be consistent. Every day you have to do the things that need to be done. So uh -huh. I'm just trying to use that, 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 that logic across the board in my daily, in my daily life. That's really great. That's really fantastic. Um, so if you, could, uh, if you could have the viewers, you beautiful people, if you could have them uh, leave here with one thing uh, that you want them to know, what would it be? Or one thing that you find is super important to you? Uh, I think it's taking the courage to investigate for yourself, really, because a lot of us have um, were given birth into different religions, different communities, and it's it's for you to really just take a step to have the courage to take the step. Because for me, when I took the step, I do I felt like the burden was taken off because I felt like there was a lot of expectations of me in uh -huh. that specific faith. But then when I um, like you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to take this time to really investigate what I feel is right to me. Because there are a lot of questions that there are there, but then do you have the, the confidence? Do you have 
the yeah, do you have the confidence to really challenge those questions, those challenge, challenge those norms? Uh-huh. And the really confidence, really, the courage. Yeah, to really investigate for yourself because you've been told, but do you believe it? Those are two different things. And coming from the, the Christianity point of view, um, you, I felt like okay, look, the way I didn't necessarily have the wanting to really pray. I didn't have the, the longing to really go after God. Like I, I felt it was there, but then it wasn't really there at the same time. Uh-huh. So it, if you're not able to believe that it comes second nature to you, then I feel like maybe you might need to do a bit more investigation on where you feel like the, commun- the communication you have with God is yeah. just paramount. It's something that you look after. It's something that you go after that you feel like, look, if you're, not, if you're not doing this, then you need to really, really put in more, um, put in more work to your communication to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's like you can hear God on, you know, on the other side of his door, mm. but you got to open the door. You got to be, you have the courage and the, and the tenacity uh, like you did to open this mm. door and investigate it for yourself. You know? Yeah. And that's how you find the understanding. Well, this has been a wonderful experience. I, I loved hearing about it. I would love to talk to you again sometime. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, anything else you want to say? Uh, I think just to you, keep on doing the, what's it called? The, the memes you do with, with the, the Baha'i faith as well. <laughs> You've seen my memes. Yeah. Okay. I do, I do Baha'i related <laughs> memes on uh, Instagram and Facebook. So. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, uh, thank you. That, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day, a night, whatever it is, uh, where you are. And uh, have a good night. Have a good night. <laughs>